Hello and welcome to the seventh and final chapter of our vehicle series here. This first part of this two part chapter will focus on blocking in the interior of the cockpit. Now, when I say uh, the interior, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of work. We're just going to be doing some basic detail work, really more working with silhouettes and such, just to give us a good impression of the cockpit interior here, such that, you know, when viewed from an angle, you could imagine that a pilot or actually based on the concept, looks like a pilot and a passenger could then sit in the cockpit here. We're not going to be doing a lot of detail work, you know, not really enough for close-up shots necessarily, but just kind of basically the same as what you see in the concept where we can definitely see that, hey, here's our steering mechanism, this are maybe the dashboard controls, we've got a seat right here and another seat right in here, and then of course the actual base around those seats, and so that's kind of what we'll be focusing on in this section. So the first part that I'm going to do is to block in the piece. So let's first just go ahead and position our 3D cursor right here. Uh, notice that I'm already, I've already got it set along the X and the Z axis to be centered there. And if it's not already, then you can just press Shift C to center that. And then I'm going to go and hit Shift A, add in a mesh and a cube. On this cube, I'm going to first just hit Tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and scale it down and then switch into front view and maybe scale it a little closer right along here just somewhere about accurate. I'll go ahead and deselect the front as well, maybe scale it down a bit just to get it fairly close in there. And then I'm also going to go ahead and take this side down. I'll maybe take the front right here or the this side, maybe bring this up, this back a little bit. Then I can go ahead and extrude this out just along the normals to about right in here. And basically what I want to create is just basically the blocked in session or pieces right in here. So now that I've extruded this, I'll extrude it one more time just into the nose of the vehicle. I can then grab this top face, maybe extrude it once, and then scale it down, maybe extrude again, scale it down some more, uh, something about like that. Maybe from the front view, I'll scale it in to roughly fit this angle right in here. So this means I should deselect this, these two vertices, and then I can scale this out a bit more to something about like that. And while working on the interior here, it might also help if I go ahead and go over to the object buttons. And just since I have a pretty dense mesh, it's hard to kind of see what's going on here. So I'm going to go on down and underneath the display, I'm going to enable X-Ray. And this way, even while in wireframe mode, I can always see the exact object that I'm working with. So this makes it pretty easy to then line things up just approximately to get them to fit. So, you know, I can go ahead and select the front here. I'll scale it down to about there. I'll go ahead and select this loop, followed by this loop, scale it down. And of course, I'm just kind of matching this general angle in here. So scale that down a bit more, maybe select this, scale it down a little bit more. And there we go. Okay, so that can kind of help with some of the selection in there. I'll go ahead and select this and I'm gonna move it up to about where the seat here is turning. And then I'll extrude this back, maybe rotate it around, pull it back around there. And then I'll select this top piece and I'm just going to hit E to extrude, take it up, pull it back to right about in there, maybe scale it down along the Y axis a little bit. From the front view then, I can bring this in to say about right there. And then I'll select the whole back side by first alt right clicking on this side. And then I'll shift right clicking on this side, hit S, X, scale it out to again match the same basic angle of this side. And there we go, that works pretty close. And I think that's close enough to go ahead and add in my mirror modifier. So from the front view, I'll hit Control R, and a loop cut right here, right click, then I can select the whole left side, hit X, delete the vertices. I'll go ahead and go over to the modifiers tab after selecting everything and press add modifier and mirror. And of course, add in the clipping, and then I won't add in the subsurf just yet. I'll save that for the next section. But at this point, I want to help isolate this a little. So I'm going to first just select all the different components that make up the front, basically, just these right in here. And now I'll just hit Shift H. And this will make it a lot easier to kind of see the different angles that I have going on to get this to work right. So now I can go in here, maybe grab this vertex, bring it in to match this surface. And then let's go in and bring this down to about here. 
this over here. And so now it's just a matter of kind of matching the concept as best we can with as much information as we have, which isn't a whole lot. But well, I can select this, maybe pull it up, pull both of these down. I'll go and add in. Oh, no, I won't add in a loop yet. Uh, that should be about right there. I want to go ahead and this looks pretty good for the seat. All I'm going to go ahead and turn off my X-ray now. I don't really need it anymore now that I can kind of see what's going on and I have the general mesh built up. But let's go and add in another mesh. Although I'll just do that by selecting, say, this part here. Uh, actually, these here. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, S to scale it down to about right there. I'll deselect this side, move this up to right about in there where, you know, kind of maybe the side of the seat would be. I'll select the whole thing by just hitting L while hovering over it. And then what I want to do is switch into front view. I'm going to deselect this side, scale this down around the X axis, about like that. And then I can kind of bring it into a, you know, a nice width for the seat, maybe to about like that. I can then select this whole thing. And I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, and then hit Alt S to then just scale it up. That way I get a nice even width on the seat here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the whole seat. I'm going to hit Shift D and bring it down to somewhere right in there, I think. This front seat, I'll go ahead and lean forward just a little bit more. Maybe rotate, bring it over here. And I think that'll be pretty good. I then also want to go ahead and I'm going to hit Shift H in object mode to hide this. This will give me a little bit easier way to start blocking in a bit more. And one thing that I want to do is add in a ridge around the seats so that they can be added. So first, I'll add one in right here. And actually, I'll slide this down a little. So I'll alt right click, select it, hit control E. And then I'll add in another ridge or another loop here to then bring an edge loop up just like that. And I'll go ahead and pull it inside the seat such that the seat is actually um, kind of connected with the rest of the mesh. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'll first select this one, pull it down to about there add in another loop, then pull that up to about right there. That way each seat is kind of on its own level. And then I also want to go ahead and add in another loop right across like this. And I'll hit SX, bring it in to kind of flatten it out. And you notice I'm going to just bring it out to the edge of the seats, basically, just about like that. And then I'm going to add in another edge loop right up next to it. I'll left click to go right next to it. And then I'll G and X, bring it over along the x-axis to about right there. And then I can deselect these ones back here that are nicely formed. And then these ones, I'll just hit Control E, edge slide, bring them all the way into that one. And then I can edge slide back again, which will me leave me with a nice even mesh there. I can maybe go ahead and select this as well. Hit Control E, edge slide, slide that down. Maybe I'll do the same thing with this one. Just, you know, even things out just a little bit. I could even do the same thing with this one just a little maybe i'll slide this one in a little bit and there we go that looks good because now what this allows me to do is to go ahead and hit control tab go to face mode i'm going to select all of these faces and then uh actually i'm going to de or i'm going to add an edge loop here first to separate this section because then i can go into face mode i'll select all of these faces immediately next to the seat i'm going to hit e to extrude immediately right click and then again just hit alt s to push those up along the normals, something about like that. And that will give me, you know, both, it's kind of a an armrest along with extra support around the seats. And notice on the back seat, I currently don't have a place for the pilot or the passenger's legs or co-pilot, you know, whatever it may be. So then I'm just going to pull it back just a little bit. And then I'll also go ahead and pull the uh, the front one, the pilot seat, forward a little bit as well just to kind of average out the two there we go and then this right here i might go ahead and just pull down something about like that followed by adding another edge loop in there to which then i can select this part of it and pull right up to there there we go so that gives me a nice kind of separated piece. I'll go ahead and save my file. And that's almost it for the blocking, but I do want to go ahead and add in the basics of the steering mechanism. So this I'm going to add as a separate object because I don't, well, actually, 
uh, we'll do it as two objects. The first one will be a circle, which won't have a mirror modifier on it, and the other one will have a mirror modifier. So first, from the front view, after positioning my cursor, still aligned along the x-axis, I'm going to hit Shift-A, add in a mesh, and a circle. In the circle will go and hit F6, take the vertex count down to uh, 12 ought to be good. I'll take the radius down to, say, 0.1, and I will go ahead and align it to view. Now I hit tab to go into edit mode, hit 3D to side view, rotate this around, scale it down, move it back like this, hit E to extrude, bring it out, scale it down, hit E to extrude again, scale it down again, um, and then I'll go ahead and hit, uh, actually that ought to be pretty good right there, actually no, I'll extrude again, right click, S scale down, and then I'll hit E to extrude, take it out to about right there and then hit, um, I'm gonna hit shear this so I'll hit control I believe it's alt shift s gives me the shear tool which unfortunately actually only works along specific axes in this case I believe it's the top view uh, well, actually it's being a little weird right now so that's okay so I'm gonna instead I'm just gonna rotate it about like this then I'll hit s and z scale it up to be approximately right in there then I can hit e to extrude right click S to scale down, and then I will go in, and I'm going to go ahead and hit F to fill a face in here. I'll hit W, subdivide, and then I can just add in, I guess I need to actually subdivide that three times, I think it is, without that selected. There we go. Now I can add in a face, and another face, and another one. Select each one of these. And last one, and there we go. That does that. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A in object mode, add in a new cube. On this cube, we'll hit Tab to go in edit mode, scale it way down to about there, and then I'll scale it down along the Z axis a bit, bring it uh, over here along the Y axis, then I'll bring it up and across the X. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude this a couple times around. So this will be the steering mechanism. Something about like this. And then I'll go ahead and add in my mirror modifier. Hit X, delete these faces. And then extrude this once into the center. About there. And you'll notice that I've done it perfectly straight right now. Because then I'm just going to rotate in object mode, such that when I go in to rotate these around the normals or the locals, then it'll be a lot, a little bit easier to manipulate. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this centerpiece up, just like this, so I kind of have a half circle plus a semicircle right in here, which will actually connect to the steering piece. So now in object mode, I'll just rotate this around in the edit mode, then I can move this along the local Z axis. Actually, I want to move it right down here. And then this piece here, I'll go ahead and extrude. So I'll just extrude this out like this, rotate it, scale it along the z-axis there. I'm going to go ahead and move the whole thing up just a little bit, right about there. I could add in two edge loops here, hit Alt-S. Uh, no, I don't want to hit Alt-S to do that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and select this whole top piece, and then deselect the sides that have been added. Hit G, double tap Z. Uh, actually, I guess that doesn't really work. But I could do it with these ones. G, double tap Z. No. Still my locals don't work, but that's okay. I can just move this down manually to about right there. And here. Maybe scale this to zero along the Y axis, and then rotate it again. Scale along the Z axis a bit. And that then looks pretty good. I might also go ahead and scale this around the x-axis just a bit, move it in along the x. There we go, just to kind of, again, move it over just enough to kind of even out. And that looks pretty good. And I think we're going to... So we'll do just a little bit more. I want to go ahead and go into face mode, and I'm going to select these faces. Actually, first I'm going to add in an edge loop right here. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode, or no, excuse me, face mode. I'm going to select these faces, make sure my vertex snapping is set, 
And then I'm going to hit Control Tab, go to Vertex Mode, hit E to Extrude, and snap to these vertices here. And then, you know, I may need to snap that one. And then I can go ahead and select all those vertices and hit X and Delete Faces. Then I'll select everything, W, and Remove Doubles. And what that then does is gives me an area to basically, that would be the, the dashboard controls. So that works well. And I think I'll also go ahead and say, take these edges, I'll hit Alt S, or I guess I'll just bring them down manually, say to about there, pull that down to about there. Maybe I'll bring these down just a little bit. Same thing with these. Felt they were just a little bit high. Okay, that works well. I might go ahead and bring these back just a bit to right in there. So, you know, if the pilot's armrest is sitting on it here, he could have some controls right on this face. And I think I might go ahead and bring this whole side over a little bit more. So, I'll just select all these, G and X, pull them over. And that now looks pretty good. Let's go and hit Alt-H, make sure nothing's popping through. And that's going to be it for blocking this in. Next, we'll come back and add in some more detail work. We're going to go ahead and keep working with the block that we have of the cockpit interior, which you can see uh, right here. I've got these two separate meshes that are ready to be detailed. And like I mentioned on the previous video, we're not gonna be doing a lot of detail work. Uh, oh, and actually I have one more mesh right there. There we go. Uh, like I said, we're not gonna be doing a lot of detail work. We're just gonna be basically doing enough to give a good impression of the, the cockpit here. So let's go ahead and start off by one hitting shift space. And let's start on the seats. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the seats. I'm gonna separate them to a new mesh and just hit P, separate by selection. And this way I can just work with them easily. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit, uh, add in a subsurf modifier, take it up to level two, turn on my optical display, go hit tab, go on edit mode, select everything, and shade smooth. Now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete the back seat because I'm just gonna create a duplicate of the front seat whenever I'm done. So now let's go ahead, we'll add in a subsurf modifier or a edge loop right here, an edge loop right here, using just control R for the edge loops. And then we'll go ahead and add one in to the front. I'm not gonna take it too close to the front because I do want a rounded corner on here. I'll add in another one, a similar distance away from the front on that view. I'm gonna go ahead and select these front faces. I don't wanna just give a little bit of roundness to the seat here. Although I then might go ahead and select, add another edge loop here, add it right in the center, and then I will pull these back so we've got a little bit of shape in there. Or actually, you know what? I guess that actually ought to be the other way around since you really need, you know, you want shape to the shape to fit your legs well. And so assuming you've got your legs, you know, fair weight, a little bit apart so that you can reach each, each pedal and things like that, then we'll have that kind of shape. We can pull the center of the seat up a little bit. Same thing right here. We'll go ahead and, and let's see. Let's add in another loop right down the center here, which then we'll hit Alt S to scale along the normals, round that out a bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and take the very center of the seat here. We'll take that up just a little bit more from the side view. Might go ahead and rotate this, pull this out a little bit. And that now looks pretty good. Uh, I wanna go ahead and add in another loop here along the sides, which this side then will basically be the edge of the seat, so these ones. I'm gonna go ahead and select all this. I'm gonna take it forward, about like so. Starts to give us a little bit more shape in here. Notice in here we've got this nice kind of headrest shape. So let's add in a new mesh right about here, or a new edge loop, sorry. And then we'll select this face. We're gonna hit E to extrude, take it out. We'll go ahead and select these, pull them up, and pull that up. Then I'm gonna add in another loop right up to that edge pull these up even more, add in another loop right up to that edge as well. And that starts to look pretty good. I think I might wanna go ahead and bring these edges across the x-axis just a little bit more, maybe to right about there. I could go ahead and take these edges, pull them down just a little bit, and then I can take 
these ones, maybe scale across the x-axis, and then I'll go ahead and pull them up. Actually, I'll just hit Alt-S. No, nope, that doesn't quite work. Uh, I'll just pull them up manually just a little bit to get some extra shape in there. Maybe add in another edge loop just like that. And that starts to look pretty good. But I would like to go ahead and select all of the cushion or the main mesh from the front here. So I'm going to select all of these, all of these, and then these ones as well. Except for not those. Uh, actually, you know what? I do want to select... Uh, no, I don't want to select those. Instead, I want to grab these and I'm going to pull them across the x-axis to about right there. Make that a little sharper. And then I can go ahead and select these, 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 and these ones down here. And then I will deselect these bottom edges right there at the seam. And I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S to push these along the normals. And I'm going to hit W and smooth a few times. Maybe push it out a little bit more. There we go. So now we've got some good separation in there. We'll do the same thing with the bottom faces. So just select all the faces like this. And that looks about right. And in this case, I want to go ahead and select all of these back here as well. Select all these. Deselect these ones that I selected because I actually selected that face loop just to ensure I got all these back here. And then we'll go ahead and grab these front ones as well. And we don't need to worry about the bottom ones. Those won't really show. But I'll now go ahead and actually, you know what? I'll grab these ones as well. And those ones. There we go. Okay, so I've got all of that selected. Just need to add in that one like that. And now I can hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S, push those out. And it gives me another good impression of a cushion shape right in there. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I think we will probably leave that about like it is. Um, we might, let's see. We could, we could add in a loop here and then another loop right here, which would, and eh, no, I'm not going to worry about that. Instead, I'm just going to leave that like it is. Uh, you know, again, we're just kind of working with silhouettes here, so we don't want to do too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Alt D, duplicate that back, position that right about there, and that gives me both seats. I'll now go ahead and work on the rest of it. Let's first go ahead and work on the steering piece. So I'll go in, add in a subsurf modifier to this, do the usual level two, optimal display, W, shade smooth. And then I'll go in and I'm going to start adding some edge loops. So I'll first add one right here. And then I might go ahead and add in another one right here, which I will go ahead and scale down along the Z axis, maybe rotate a little bit, pull this up so it looks something a little bit like that. So then I can add another edge loop on this side and another edge loop on this side. And then I can go ahead and select this edge loop, hit S to scale it down, and then add in another edge loop on each side of these. And that gives me a nice seam right in there. I can also go ahead and add in another loop right up like that. And then I'll add in, say, uh, how about, I want to say, four loops. Yeah, I think four loops because then I can select one, two, and three faces, which will give me kind of that, uh, the finger hold here on the back. So I'll select these ones. I'll just hit E to extrude, take them out along the normals. Then I can hit W and smooth, which will basically just shrink them down. It gives me the, the grips right there, real nice and easy. I can go ahead and select this top face. I'll hit E to extrude, right click S to scale it in. And then I'll do that again and again. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude it down and then extrude in again. So I hit E to extrude and since it's going along the normals, I have to right click to cancel it. I'll scale it in and then I can go ahead and extrude it up a few times. And that gives me a button there on the top that could be, you know, any number of things. That looks good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and add in a little bit more shape to this piece. I'm going to add in a loop. Actually, you know what? Let's first go in here and I'm going to select my button. 
just like this. Select all this. I'm going to hit Y and split it, and then I'll scale it up just a little bit. Uh, then I can go ahead and actually delete this inside loop. You'll never know the difference. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in another loop right across. Um, hmm, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll add in another loop right across to about there, and another one right across to about there. Somewhere about. Okay, just adds a little bit extra shape so it's not perfectly round. I can maybe add another one there, so then I'll pull it out just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm going to undo that. Uh, but with these, then, I want to go ahead and select these, hit Alt-S, or I guess just S, scale it in. And that ought to be fine. Again, you'll never know the, notice the difference from an angle, from a distance. I'll go in, let's add in, say, another loop right about here. And then I could add in another one right about to there. I'll then select this piece. I'll hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S, take it up just a little bit. Let me pull it out to about there. Then I could go in, select these two, extrude them out as well. Give a little bit of difference in there. Maybe I'll add in an edge loop right along the base of each one. And on each one of these, I'm going to select all the faces on the surface. I'm going to hit W and smooth just a few times to make sure that's not real distinct. Okay. And then let's go ahead and work on this piece. Again, I'll hit shift space, add in my subdivision surface modifier, set everything to smooth. I'll hit control N to remove this black spot. And I'll add in a loop there. Add in a loop right there. And that actually ought to be enough. Although I could maybe go ahead and add in a loop there, then select these. Hit Control Tab, go to vertex mode, hit E to extrude, Alt S, scale it up, add in a loop to there, another loop on this side. There we go. Just, you know, add a little bit more volume to things. And then let's go ahead and select this piece, hit Shift Space, add in our subsurf modifier, and then do this, do the normal thing. There we go. And I'll first add in a loop right across there. Make sure that's sharp. Another one right there and right here. Then let's add in a loop across that and on each side of this. Which will sharpen all that up nicely. Then we'll add in another one right along the edge. Before we do anything else, let's go and hit Alt-H to make sure everything is looking just fine. I'll select all the front pieces here and then just hit and that one and hit Shift H. And then to view this a little better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to go over to my, my materials and let's go ahead and turn on transparency. And on the Z transparency, take the alpha down to say uh, 0.2 or so. And then in order to see this in the viewport, let's go over to the material or the world, uh, excuse me, object properties and enable transparency right here. And now we can actually see that mesh inside our viewport. So now what I need to do is go in and make sure that everything is fitting nicely, which currently it really is not. So the way that I'm going to fix this is one, I'm going to add in a loop right down like this, and then I'll add another one right next to it, because then I'm going to select all of these faces here, maybe deselect that one and that one, and these ones back here. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, take this out to about right there, maybe flatten along the x-axis a little bit. Then I can go and hit X, delete those faces, and that will ensure that I've got some good variation in there. And, you know, since this is a, well, yeah, that'll be about right. And then I can go ahead and select, say, first off, let's go ahead and select all these back faces, hit X, delete those faces. And then I will select all of these, deselect that vertex, and I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, scale this, uh, actually let's go ahead and just position our cursor right about here. We'll hit period, 
and then just scale out along the cursor to about there. And I'll hit G, hold down control, and snap right to that vertex. Then I can select everything, W, and remove doubles. And then I can just view this from different angles. Maybe I'll pull this up just a little bit. Just like that. Pull those up. And so really, I'm just trying to kind of match the different sections to get them fairly close. Maybe I'll pull that up a bit more there. I could select these, pull them in. And so you just want to get it such that, you know, when viewed from various angles and such, it'll look like this is, you know, all kind of fitting together, even though it's not necessarily. You know, it's really just kind of a quick hack job to make it look as though there's some various different sections in here. Okay, I'm going to add in a loop right up to this edge. Maybe, no, eh, not right there. I kind of like that curvature we've got going on. I might add in a loop right up through there, though. Maybe I'll deselect this side, though, and deselect that. Maybe deselect those as well, and those, and then I'll hit Control Control E, Edge Slide, bring those down a bit more. Excuse me. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you can see that we're definitely getting uh, extra space right up here. So I'm going to select all these faces, hit X, delete the faces. And then I'll go ahead and just add in an edge loop to about right here. And I can actually then just go in here, delete these. I can also select this bottom piece, hit X, delete those vertices. And then I will select all of this. And I will hit E to extrude. I'll take it all the way up to that top surface. Maybe you hit comma to rotate around the cursor or around the individual center. Match this approximately. And I'll deselect these, rotate these down to about there. I can then go ahead and scale these along the y axis approximately, then rotate a little, pull them down. And I could go ahead, select this whole edge, deselect that vertex, and then just hit E to extrude. Bring it out here, snap to that vertex. I'll bring that one out along the x-axis there so it's not overlapping weird. Same thing right there. And I'll grab this vertex and just pull it down to about there and line it up. Select everything, W, remove doubles. And I'll add in a loop right in like that, such that it's not merging weird. And maybe I'll add another loop right up like so. Okay, I think that just about does it. I'll add in a loop up to that. I kind of like that rounded edge in there. Although I do want to add one in down to that, since that's sharp. And I'll add another one all the way along there. And I think that will pretty much do it. Now let's go ahead, let's reselect these pieces. All of these in here, I'm gonna hit Shift H, and then let's go ahead and add in some materials to these. So this one, I'm just gonna give the, the dark gray. So we'll choose dark gray right there. And then the steering column, I will give the dark gray as well. This piece, I'm gonna go in here and let's select this loop to this loop and on up to right in here. We're gonna give this our light gray. We'll just use light gray there. And then let's hit Control I to flip the selection. We'll add that loop to the selection again. Let's hit plus sign to add a new one. We'll just hit Shift X so that this will, that material, since it created a duplicate of that, will add a new one, or excuse me, it will remove that entirely when we save the file or reopen it. And then on this, we'll go ahead and give it the dark gray, click assign, and that ought to be good right there. On these, I'm gonna give it mostly the dark gray, but then I'm going to select the sides here, right there, all the way over to right there, deselect that one, over to there, 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 
select that whole loop there and that one and that looks like the whole piece we're going to go ahead and give this the a green the green one so let's just add a new one we'll hit the shift x and then we'll go ahead and choose the the green so the shift x will remove these duplicates that we're getting in here that don't have a user so just add the green click assign and then to fix this bleeding in here let's just add in another loop right up to that edge we'll select this loop here and we're going to assign that dark gray there we go so now our seats are kind of cool two-tone color and that looks pretty good let's hit alt h un or reveal everything and we can kind of see how it's all looking and that looks pretty good on the glass here we can go ahead and i'm going to take the transparency up to say 0.4 or so just so that we can definitely still see the form in the viewport but i believe that is that and we're going to call our vehicle complete i know that you know there's obviously still a lot of things that we could do we could go in and de really do a lot of detail on the interior but we'd be doing a lot of work uh just from the top of our head which is totally fine but since we are you know we're not necessarily on a time constraint but there's enough things that we would need to create from scratch that you know we might as well go ahead and just wait particularly on a vehicle like this you're mostly going to see it at a, at a distance which at this point you know from way out here that uh amount of detail on the inside is perfect and so you know if you want to add in a whole bunch of detail you definitely can by taking you know all the different things that were learned right in here applying them on a smaller scale adding in here and you can get some pretty sick detail going on but that's it so we've covered a lot of modeling in this i don't know how many hours we're at total right now but you know we'll get that listed for you for sure before you actually even get started on this so by now you probably already know what it is uh, but we cover a lot of things we've covered a lot of uh, polygonal modeling edge by edge modeling to box modeling everything from creasing to subsurf the subsurf modifier using the array modifier mirror modifier uh, we used a few constraints here and there we used obviously a lot of mesh objects along with a few curve objects even used the empty in a few places to work with the modifiers to kind of extend their functionality we've got a total final poly count be i believe before subsurfing of uh well actually that's five million nine hundred and eighty four no five hundred ninety eight thousand four hundred seventy seven polys i believe that's before subsurfing you can check if you go to simplify take this all the way down to zero click simplify and okay now we have forty five thousand two hundred fourteen so that's actually after the subsurfing so if you want to know our actual poly count of meshes that we've created that's it right there with a total of 50,298 vertices definitely got a fairly complex mesh in there but there you go i really hope that you have enjoyed this series and we look forward to seeing you next time